advantage of this foundation compared with the previous type is that the amount of excavation is appreciably smaller and the problem of soil disposal almost eliminated. Furthermore, the amount of concrete to be mixed, handled and placed is very much less. In addition, and because of these smaller quantities, the site is kept much cleaner. On the other hand, more time is taken in the design of this foundation and it is essential that the supervision of the work on the site is greater than is normally given to the strip types of foundation. The third alternative type is the under ream pile foundation. Strictly, this is not a pile. It is a form of pad carrying the load on end bearing only. Normally bored to a depth of four feet, it is 12 inches in diameter, opening out to a maximum of 33 inches at the base in the form of a 45 degree inverted mushroom. In this foundation, the same general principles as for straight bored piles are followed in both design and construction. The heads of the piles or pads support a reinforced in situ concrete ground beam constructed with an underlay of ashes and building paper. On this beam, the brickwork is built up to receive the damp proof course. This prototype machine for boring under reamed holes has been specially designed and developed by the building research station for experimental work. The auger is mounted on an agricultural tractor which enables the machine to be driven from site to site along public roads under its own power and so avoids expensive transport by low loader. The driver is guided by the banksman along the line of the pegs which mark the centers of the holes to be bored. When the auger has been positioned above the first peg, the tractor is leveled by means of its hydraulically operated legs with the aid of a circular spirit level mounted on the machine in front of the driver, bringing the positioning rod directly over the peg. The rod is then withdrawn from the auger head and the specially designed shovel for collecting the discharged spoil is unhooked from the machine. Boring begins with the auger blades closed. The straight shaft is first bored to the required depth, in this case four feet, the auger being fed into the ground by this manually operated lever. Boring time for the straight shaft averages about three and a half minutes. The withdrawal of the auger is power operated. The blades are opened and the excavated soil is taken on the special shovel which effectively covers the hole. This is how the auger blades open under the ground when they are making the under reaming cut. And here is the hydraulic gear which operates the blades. The auger now re-enters the hole and at the correct depth starts the under ream, the driver operating the hydraulic gear which gradually opens the blades. An average time of six minutes is required for this part of the operation when the under reaming is taken to the full 33 inches diameter. The loose crumbs of soil left in the hole have to be cleared with tools designed for the purpose. And the bottom of the hole is rammed. Concrete is then poured using the hopper to exclude loose soil. The concrete should be well rotted to ensure that the hole is completely filled up to the roof of the under reaming. Here is a typical under ream pile which has been removed from the ground. Note the clean and accurate cut made by the under reaming blades. The casting of the ground beam over the heads of the piles is then dealt with in the same way as for the straight board pile foundation with ashes in the bottom of the trench, building paper and reinforcement. The under ream pile has the same advantages as the straight board pile over the continuous strip foundation. Both piles involve less excavation and spoil disposal and less mixing and placing of concrete. But since the under ream pile is shallower than the straight pile, 
it does not afford that additional protection against the drying action of trees or large shrubs which may be planted near the house. We have now seen four different designs of house foundation, all of which will give protection against settlement on shrinkable clay. But how is the choice to be made from among them? In general, it will be on the basis of cost. But the cost of any one of these foundations will depend on the conditions existing on the particular site and on the prices of materials in that locality. Nevertheless, a useful study has been made by the building research station at one of the new towns where all three alternative foundations were used. The quantities of materials, the work involved, and the actual costs were recorded in detail on the site. Each type of foundation was used for between 25 and 30 houses, each of around 900 square feet floor area. Although deep traditional foundations were not constructed on the same site, a close estimate of their costs can be based on the recorded productivity of labor and plant for the alternative, and on the local cost of materials. The estimate made is therefore comparable with those for the three alternative types. The quantities and costs for all the foundations we have considered are shown in the diagrams which follow. First, the quantities. Excavation for the narrow strip foundation is therefore less than half of that for the deep traditional strip and that for the two pile foundations is only about a quarter of this. The 13.6 cubic yards of concrete in the narrow strip foundation is more than double that required for either of the pile foundations. Ashes, building paper and reinforcement are required only for the two types of pile foundations. The amount of brick underbuilding is similar for all three alternative foundations, but is only about one quarter of that required for the deep traditional strip foundation. The need to backfill excavated materials applies only to the deep traditional strip foundation. So much for the quantities of material. The question of cost, however, will normally be a major consideration. First, the cost of excavation. Then, the cost of concrete. In the two pile foundations, the cost of ashes, building paper, and reinforcement. Next, the cost of brickwork. cost of backfill for the deep traditional foundation. And finally, the extra cost of design and supervision for the pile foundation. The total costs per house are therefore the deep traditional strip, 75 pounds, the deep narrow strip, 53 pounds, the straight board pile, 50 pounds, and the under-reamed pile, 53 pounds. The difference in cost between the deep traditional strip foundation and the other three types is sufficiently great to justify the conclusion that it is likely to be the most costly always. On the other hand, the three newer types are closely competitive, and selection will therefore depend on the conditions on the particular site and the local cost of material. However, one thing is certain. On clay soils, any of these three types will give far greater protection against cracking than the traditional shallow foundation, and at no extra cost. 